Hey, welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to talk more about the variation principle and how it is applied to molecular systems and molecular modeling. Okay, so, <clears throat> right, what we're going to do is we're going to use kind of molecular orbital theory in combination with the variation principle to try to model and get the best wave function for our system. Okay, right, and so. <clears throat> Again, when, when we're trying to solve for the um, wave function of a molecule, we use the fact that, that you know, we, we satisfy this variation principle, right, so that we can get the best guess value possible by lowering the energy, right? The lower and lower the energy is, the closer and closer I am to the true guess, okay? Right? <clears throat> and so, right, what we do, right, is we, we right, in molecular orbital theory, we're approximating our total wave function as a product of, um, you know, one electron wave functions, okay, right? <clears throat> and these one electron wave functions are molecular orbitals, and those molecular orbitals we assume are a combination of atomic orbitals, okay? So what we assume here, for example, is that um, the total, the, the, the wave function, right, for this hydrogen dimer, right, can be written <clears throat> as some combination of, um, right, psi one here is, is related to, say, the left hydrogen, and psi two is related with the right hydrogen, right? So it's, right, um, <clears throat> electron one and electron two are in psi one and psi two. Electron one and electron one are in psi one, and, or sorry, electron one electron two are both in psi one, right? Or electron one and electron two are both in psi two, right? So, so here I have one electron in each atom, right? It's one E each atom, okay? And then these second two states, it's, it's basically that I have like an H minus and an H plus atom, right? An H plus H minus atom, right? Because I've essentially put both electrons in one hydrogen instead of the other, right? And so these, these psi ones are the atomic orbitals, right? Uh, for <clears throat> hydrogen one or hydrogen two, right? And I can write my wave function as a combination of these different ways of occupying uh, my electrons in these orbitals, right? <clears throat> and so what we can do <clears throat> with this is then try to optimize this wave function, right? Where I have Again, this, this first term here is sort of like a covalent type of bonding wave function, right, that we've talked about. Um, the second two terms are kind of like ionic type bonding, right? And so what we can do is we can try to optimize this wave function, right? It is I can try to right, find the minimum of the energy with you know, changing C1, C2, and C3, right? I can vary C1, C2, and C3, and, you know, and try to find the minimum, right, with respect to those parameters, okay? Right, now we know for the hydrogen atom, it will mainly be that C1 will be, you know, close to like 100%, and, and C2 and C3 are, you know, relatively small, right? But if you don't know that in general, right, you can try to find the optimal value, okay? So, right, <clears throat> how we use this in programs like Gaussian that you potentially used in lab, okay, um, right, is you assume, right, you, as in molecular orbital theory, that your molecular orbitals, okay, are written as a linear combination of atomic orbitals, okay? So psi mo is a molecular orbital, right? And what that means is it's an orbital wave function that can potentially span like your molecule, right? It, it, it can exist over the entire molecule. It might not, but it can, right? While <clears throat> psi AO is an atomic orbital, right? So psi AO is an atomic orbital. This is like your 1s orbital your 3p orbital, things like that, right? Orbital that's located on an atom, right? These molecular orbitals are like your sigma and your pi orbitals and, you know, pi star and so on, right? 
So, so right, your, your molecular orbitals are like those bonding, anti-bonding orbitals we've talked about in molecular orbital theory. Your atomic orbitals, right, are just your atomic orbitals, right? Your 1s orbitals, 2s orbitals, things like that, okay? And so we use this approximation for the molecular orbitals and molecules, right? And then what we can do is, using the variational principle, we can try to minimize the energy with respect to these CNs, these coefficients, okay? To try to find what are the optimal set of atomic orbitals that best create my molecular orbitals for my molecule, okay? Um, and we try to kind of solve or minimize, you know, solve this equation here by minimizing, right, the energy with respect to those coefficients, right? If you want to minimize a function, right, with respect to x, right, you take the derivative with respect to x, set equal to zero, and find the minimum, right? Um, and so that's in principle kind of what you do when modeling molecular systems, is we're just trying to find what is the optimal molecular orbitals that describe my system, right? Through uh, and, and we create those molecular orbitals through a linear combination of atomic orbitals, and we try to optimize what those linear combinations of atomic orbitals are. Okay. Um, <clears throat> right. Again, right. This this minimum that we're trying to solve for is just like solving any other minimum. Right. Df dx equals zero. Right. We're trying to just solve that. Right. And again, because we know we, we can rely on this variation principle that we will never go below the true value, right? We know that this minimum is going to be the best guess possible, right? Um, if that weren't the case, right, then we'd have no idea if the lowest energy we could get is a good energy or maybe a complete crap energy, right? So, so this variation principle is very key to being able to do this kind of minimization and be confident in saying, I'm getting a better answer as my energy keeps getting lower and lower. Okay, so <clears throat> clicker questions, kind of wrap this up, right? So according to the various principle, an improved approximation or approximate weight function is attained by minimizing the electron density, maximizing the electron density, minimizing the energy, or maximizing the energy. And we see here minimizing the energy. Okay. Right, you know the exact energy for helium is negative 79 electron volts. Um, using the variation event method, though, you do get an approximate energy of negative 83 electron volts, right? Um, and you know that you must have made some type of an error, right? Because of the variation method, um, energies must lie above the ground state, be positive, equal the exact ground state, or be at least twice the exact ground state. And it's A here, right, it must always be greater than, right, lie above, right, the ground state energy, or equal to, okay? And since this is less than the true ground state energy, then there's no way that uh, you did the calculations right, basically. Okay. And so that's it for kind of the variation principle, right? Again, this is a very key principle when studying molecular systems, right? The, the whole fact that we use atomic orbitals, right, in this molecular orbital theory, right, where we construct molecular orbitals from atomic orbitals is fully supported by this variation principle that as long as I, you know, minimize my energy, I know I'm getting a closer and closer uh, approximation to the true molecular orbitals for my system.